you know, it's really that time of the year where there's really no football news. And for somebody who does a channel specifically about football, specifically about the NFL, that kind of focuses on one team, the Cleveland Browns. But I do talk about the AFC North and everything else. Make sure you subscribe if you like that uh, description of a channel. By the way, hit the like button, subscribe, be notified so you don't miss anything. Cheap plug. Um, But, you know, during this time, it's hard out here for us content creators because we are out here digging through these stat sheets, the film where we're really trying to figure out good content to bring to you instead of just saying the same things over and over and over again talking about the same points when it comes to the football field we really want to make things varied and this is hard it's a grind you know i know you hear a lot of your favorite youtubers talk about the content thing is grind uh but this right here what i'm gonna talk about today fell gracefully into my lap from the beautiful people at ESPN. What does ESPN stand for? I have no idea anymore, but that's what we're going to check out. Mike Tannenbaum apparently has some hot takes about Baker Mayfield, and what I'm going to do is react to him with you so you're not the only one screaming at your phone or your television screen, wherever it is that you see this goofiness. I'm going to be here with you. But before I do that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members. I'm going to start with Fred Pratt the Third, David Valtier, Relentless Buck, Chunt, Rex Kaufman, The Real Quincy Carrier, Kevin Johnson, Marino V, Cleveland Cart, Matt H, Sign Sheets, Gemini, Fight Dirty 74, Yo Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hundo Magnifico, Rob Ferron, Kyle Stouffer, Luki from Munich, Dave Roth, Jay Guy 101, Joe Bobby, Brad Cabo, Dylan W, James McGinley, Orenda Hall, Chad Gimme, David Malinato, Dylan Hale, Josh Ben. Door, Mark M, TJ Showman, Stuart Moore, Cleveland BCI, Robert Jermaine Jr., Dave Mike May, John Cummings, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bear, Brock Kumar, John Albert, Massayua, Brunza Roland, James Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcoxon, Marie Vivert, Sean Barron, Goggles Pizano, Corporal Nick Lopez, Dom Gazzulo, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker, Colin 216, Anthony Latham, Christian, Dave Strong, Matt Stone, Charles Work, Billy, Moose Gentry, Mark Burnett the second, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound Kai, Greg Ehlers, Austin Bowling, Kirkabar, Eastley Badge, Joe Hart, Warren Ash, Tyler Chiz, John Kessel, Jay. Gabriel Wilson, Max Nilakinko, Lydia Mahawk, Jesus Serrano, Chris Fonts, Picktown Browns backers, Mark Khan, Max Isle Dojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for your support. I can't tell you how much it means, and I hope you guys all enjoy this video of us reacting to Mike Tannenbaum. I have not done a bad take reaction in quite a while, and I'm interested in one seeing if, you know, the YouTube Illuminati, as Vach Lombardi calls it, does not, like, immediately strike me. Um, if this is something that we can continue to do and continue to have fun with, because I do think there's a lot that comes on on these sports talk shows that, you know, maybe it's not a takedown of whoever's saying it, but it does deserve some pushback from people who are more familiar with the team um, than the people speaking on TV. So I do think this is a worthwhile series to consider to do, so consider this a little bit of a pilot. We're going to be reacting. The title of this this video is Baker Mayfield skill set is replaceable. I wouldn't give him a massive deal. Mike Tannenbaum. <laughs> if you don't know, Mike Tannenbaum is the former GM of the New York Jets. He has not had a GM job since he's been fired as the New York Jets GM. He has made some questionable decisions as a GM. Um, I believe he's the guy who extended Mark Sanchez. Um, so let, let's see what kind of fire knowledge that Mike Tannenbaum has accrued while not being in the NFL for the last few years. Let's see what he has to offer us about one Baker Mayfield. And you know what, guys? Let's not sell Mike Tannenbaum short. Sure, he got fired from the Jets, of all things. Um, but a lot of people get fired from the Jets. And maybe Mike might drop some knowledge on me, drop some nuggets, some jewels on me that might make me change my mind. Maybe the next video on this channel I'm going to make is the Browns should never extend Baker Mayfield because of what Mike Tannenbaum said on one of ESPN's best shows. Get up. Baker Mayfield is now in the exact same spot, at least in the trajectory of his career, 
that Jared Goff and Carson Wentz were. Each of them, after their third seasons, got huge contract extensions. And we all know that Goff has subsequently been traded to the Lions, and Wentz got benched and is now on the Indianapolis Colts. And so the question is... Cools. That's where we starting off with the segment. We are comparing Baker Mayfield and his situation to Jared Goff and Carson Wentz, which ultimately, look, it's annoying that our quarterback constantly gets compared to the other quarterbacks that didn't get work that didn't work out even though you can easily do this graphic with like other quarterbacks from past eras or even recently that look pretty good right now it's just they choose to put Jared Goff in or they choose to put Carson Wentz it's ultimately fair but it's also like annoying that they keep doing that so that's where they're starting this whole segment out with so we kind of know where this is going but let's let's continue if you're the Cleveland Browns, is this a good time to extend the quarterback long term? Mike Tannenbaum is my general manager. I come back to you. If you're the man making that decision, are you giving the big deal to Baker Mayfield right now? I am not for a couple of reasons. First of all, he's under contract for this year for roughly around $10 million. You exercise the option. And again, the cap is going down for next year. So call that around $22 million. And then you can franchise him the year after. Greenlee, it's just what we had talked about couple years ago with Zeke Elliott. Oh, <laughs> all right. So what Mike Tannenbaum just described there is what a lot of NFL GMs are literally trying to avoid doing. This is what happened with Dak Prescott and why the Cowboys had to give Dak Prescott like $100 million up front um, and we're in a bad negotiating position with them and if you look at how that situation was handled you look at what Jerry Jones has said publicly about the negotiations that he had even though he's a team owner really didn't have that much leverage when it came to negotiating that contract situation with Dak because ultimately if you're the Cowboys you're going to want to keep a quarterback the caliber of Dak but what happens when you do the thing that Mike Tannenbaum is doing which is you're going to take out the fifth year option and you're going to use the two franchise tag years on him. What you do when you do that is essentially if this is a quarterback you want to keep, and I think this is a quarterback that the Browns want to keep. Maybe Mike Tannenbaum is saying that this is not a quarterback that the Browns would want to keep. But even if that was the case, like if you thought Baker wasn't good at all, why in the world would you give him his fifth-year option? Why in the world would you give him a franchise tag? And why in the world would you franchise tag him after you franchise tag? But the way this works is that right now Baker's on his rookie deal for four years. Once he gets to that fifth year, you get a fifth-year option with first-round draft picks. Now, since Baker was the number one overall pick, I believe his fifth-year option can be picked up for about $20 million for one year. So that's just an extension. So it's kind of like an automatically built-in extension or team option for the team if you drafted somebody in the first year for a fifth year. That's how that works. So all that's good, right? Every team takes the fifth-year option, but where you start to get into muddy territories when you talk about the franchise tag. Now, here's where you get into a sticky situation with the franchise tag, right? Because sure you can technically franchise tag somebody twice but the price of franchise tagging somebody twice with the new rules is so exorbitantly high that you might as well pay the guy up front right i think he mentions it's about like 65 million for for three or four years all that's going to be guaranteed up front that's basically what Kirk Cousins contract was when he signed with the Minnesota Vikings that's what you would do if you franchise in two years so the reason teams aren't doing this and the reason teams don't want to do this is that it's pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to have to reset the market when you resign your quarterback which is the position that Dak Prescott put the Cowboys in which is why Dak Prescott got all that money even though he didn't play last year at all, right? Let's continue to see what he says. Because he was a first round pick, you have that extra year, so it's roughly about $69 million over three years. And Baker Mayfield has a skill set that is replaceable. When you think about guys like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, those are much harder players to replace. So pay as you go. You don't have to take the risk of the guaranteed money like they did with Carson Wentz and Jared Goff. And if you're Cleveland, if he ever graduates down the road, you could replace his skill set a lot easier than Buffalo ever could with Josh Allen. Now, I get why that argument might fly on Twitter. I get why some people might, you know, quick thought go, yeah, that makes sense. But think about the great quarterbacks in the NFL 
and how replaceable their skill sets are. Tom Brady, what's his skill set? We know he's great. Everything that separates him is about him, but it's not about his skill set. Deshaun Watson, right? He was a top five quarterback last year, MVP candidate to most people, right? What's his skill set? You know, he could scramble a little bit. He could throw the ball. Baker has a greater skill set technically than Deshaun Watson. That doesn't make him a better quarterback right now than Deshaun Watson. Baker has a better skill set right now than Tom Brady. Doesn't make him a better quarterback than Tom Brady. Also, why do we act like Baker doesn't have one of the strongest arms in football? Like, why does this keep getting past? They, they, he mentioned Case Keenum's skill set as comparable to Baker Mayfield's. Has he not seen those two play football? Oh, it's when I criticize people in sports media and I say sometimes I feel like their takes are lazy. This is a prime example because it doesn't really take that much to know that Baker Mayfield has a strong arm. Like it's not like a deep cut to know that Baker Mayfield has a strong arm. It's a pretty it's a pretty prevalent thing if you just take any research into this player. And when it comes to Baker Mayfield, he's one of the more popular players in the NFL right now. He's one of the more recognizable football players right now. It's not like you're talking about a third string linebacker on some team or, or some special team or like, this is a quarterback who the NFL has had on their commercials with Tom Brady. I, I don't. I just don't get it. You know, Baker Mayfield's way too popular of a quarterback. He's a former number one overall pick to to be this lazy on your analysis of him. But again, this is former general manager of the Jets that we're talking about, Mike Tannenbaum. So. Yeah, I, I think I, I generally agree with Mike's premise of having patience uh, with the situation. The thing I would argue against is this. Under, you know, under Kevin Stefanski's leadership, Baker Mayfield is going to improve. You know, he hasn't been a 4,000-yard passer yet in his career because the situation in Cleveland had been a disaster. Go look at what Kirk Cousins did in Minnesota with Kevin Stefanski there. You know, he's, he's over 4,000 yards. He's somewhere between 26 and 30 touchdowns and 10 or fewer uh, interceptions. He's completing about 70% of his passes. That's what Baker Mayfield can do. So Baker's numbers, like they were this past year, were up from his previous two years. They will be up again. He's only going to improve, and then at that point, Baker then becomes more expensive. So I actually think you can argue that you sign Baker now before he's put up numbers in, that are similar to other guys that are getting these big contracts. Maybe get Baker under a good deal because you feel like you can build around him because of your leadership in the organization. I understand that completely, but on some level, I feel like you're making Mike's point for him, which is that it's the coach who's really the reason that he's doing that, and if so, then maybe a lot of other players you could put in that same situation and do it. But, Greeny, they would have to be available, and so you're taking the risk that they're available. Maybe the, the Ryan Tannehill player that you want to you know, release him or replace him with when that time comes because you've delayed it on him, he might not be there. And so that's the risk that you're taking. I'm not disagreeing with Mike that it's a replaceable skill set uh, in comparison to Lamar or Josh Allen, but I would also argue that his skill set as compared to somebody as, say, Kirk Cousins, is in fact better. So look, I, I, just, I think that you're hoping that somebody is available to replace them with, and I don't think that that's absolutely a given. What Matt Hasselbeck said there makes sense, right? You want to sign Baker Mayfield now. You might be able to get him on a cheap deal now um, because if he blows up, has a big season, or you do put yourself in that corner with the franchise tag thing, then you're going to be forced into paying him a lot more than what you maybe could have gotten away with paying him early on in his career it's a sound argument but also it's based on the assumption that baker mayfield's going to keep getting better now again my whole issue with mike tannenbaum's um whole suggestion is why is he taking this middle ground step with baker mayfield when he clearly doesn't think he's good right like that's the one thing right if you don't think baker mayfield's good then you just don't move forward with the contract negotiations and you don't go past the fifth year option with them but mike tannenbaum's like nah let's pay this dude that i don't think is good and i think is replaceable top five money then top two money the next year plus some um 
and then figure it out with him, which is a horrible situation to put yourself, whether the assumption is Baker Mayfield is good, whether it's not. Like, I'm trying to look at this through Mike Tannenbaum's lenses, and it doesn't make very much sense. What Tim Hasselbeck is saying at least makes sense based on his perspective, Baker Mayfield, which is he's making the assumption that Baker's going to be better. So, again, you all know how I feel. I feel Baker Mayfield's going to be pretty good. Um, I already think he's a top 10 quarterback. So, you know where I'm at on this. I'm just trying to get and understand the perspective of what everybody else is saying. All right. So we have heard some good retorts from Tim Hasselbeck. I think this is actually a pretty good segment. It's better than I thought it was going to be coming into it. But Mike, you got one more thing to say. Let's hear what he has to say. I made the same mistake with Mark Sanchez. We started off four road playoff wins. We gave him a massive <laughs> extension. It didn't work out. Ooh, and the we, inverse of what Tim's saying we know, is. We know, what, Mike. What about we the, know. <laughs> We're, we're really doing this? I know they, they're both probably the same around the same height. They both wore number six. But they got nothing else in common, man. They really don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. That, that's, that's about all I could stomach of this video. Uh, let me know if you guys like this, like this style of video. If you want to see me do more uh, reactions and takedowns to some of these segments that you see on all these sports talk shows. And if you have a segment you want me to respond to, feel free to tweet at me at Quincy. Send me the segment on Twitter. And if I like it or think it's fun enough to react to, I'll react to it. But until then, I want you guys to have a great day and have a good night.